Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And what we're going to be doing in this video is practicing with the quadratic formula. And of course, the quadratic formula is a formula that allows us to solve quadratic equations. So we're going to solve this quadratic equation using a quadratic formula. But uh, let me ask you, is there other techniques that we could use to solve this quadratic equation? In other words, you might be looking at this equation and you're saying, you know what, I don't need to use the quadratic formula. I could solve this in an easier uh, method. Now, if you think you could just solve this using a different technique, go right ahead and attempt to do that. Either way, go ahead and put your solutions to this equation if you know how to do or solve this uh, particular quadratic equation. Put that into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second, and then we're going to have a discussion on uh, just in general quadratic equations, and I'm going to solve this quadratic equation using the quadratic formula. Okay, so this is going to be good practice for those of you out there that need to master the quadratic formula, and if you're taking any sort of algebra, this is an absolutely must-know uh, concept and skill. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go and take a look at the answer here. We have x squared minus 4x is equal to 8. What is the solutions to this quadratic equation? Well, here they are right here x is equal to 2 plus or minus 2 square root of 3. So this is what you should have. And this is right here is actually two solutions. So 1 is 2 plus 2 times the square root of 3. So this would be one solution. And the other solution would be uh, 2 minus 2 times the square root of 3. But kind of use this shorthand right here, this plus or minus, so we don't have to kind of you know, be a little bit redundant here with uh, writing all this out. So this is the most uh, correct answer. Now, some of you may have gotten pretty close, but you didn't maybe finish simplifying your results. Either way, if you're going to do this um, particular equation in an algebra class or some sort of uh, math class, this would be considered the uh, most correct answer. Okay, so how'd you do? Well, if you got this right, that is very, very good. Matter of fact, I'm going to give you a nice little happy face and a plus plus, a 110% and multiple stars so you can celebrate your knowledge and skill with the quad, uh, quadratic formula and quadratic equations because this particular equation, in fact, you do need to use a quadratic formula to solve uh, uh, this particular equation. Now, there is some other techniques you can use to solve this, but let's just go ahead and start talking about this right now. Okay, so here is the problem. We have x squared minus 4x is equal to 8. So, of course, I have some uh, things here that you want to be thinking about anytime you are faced with a quadratic equation. So, first of all, what is a quadratic equation? Well, it's what we call a second-degree polynomial equation. So, uh, here we have an x squared. Now, some quadratic equations don't have an x term. Okay, and of course, if this variable is y, uh, you know, um, all these variables are just, you know, be, this would be y squared and this would be 4y. So, don't let the x squared, you know, um, uh, kind of like confuse you. It could be any variable, but any variable squared. We're talking about a polynomial squared where the highest power of uh, in the equation is 2. Okay, So when you recognize you have this type of equation, of course this is an equation, the first thing you need to say is, okay, this is a quadratic equation, so there will be two solutions. Okay, So this little 2 up here indicates when you have a polynomial, that you're dealing with a second degree polynomial and there's something called the fundamental theorem of algebra it basically says that listen whatever the de power, highest power of your polynomial is uh, that's how many solutions you're going to have now what type of solutions well here uh, we just don't know that uh, right now we're just kind of looking at the equation you could have two real number solutions or you can have complex or imaginary uh, number solutions we don't know but we do know we're going to have two solutions Okay, so what else do we know about quadratic equations? Well, uh, one method that you uh, need to be aware of is that you could possibly take the square root of both sides. Now, that works out when you have a situation where you have a square on either side of the equation, something like x squared is equal to 16. 
You see here, this is a quadratic equation, second degree polynomial, but we don't have an x term. So in these type of situations, we can just simply take the square root of both sides. So this is like super awesome. So x is equal to positive negative 4. That would be the solution to that equation there. All right, now... In this particular uh, case, this equation, we're not, it doesn't, it has an x term, so we're not going to be able to do this right now. So we can't do this. We know this has a two, uh, two solutions. So what we want to uh, uh, kind of look at next is can we factor this, right? In other words, if I move this 8 over on this side, I have a quadratic trinomial, uh, x squared minus 4x minus 8 is equal to 0. Could I factor this into two binomials? Okay. Now, this is a uh, method that you should attempt to do. Now, you're not going to know whether you can factor this unless you kind of move this 8 over and you attempt to factor this. But in this case, this trinomial, you cannot factor this. This is what we call a prime trinomial. So we cannot factor uh, this trinomial. Now, if you could, that you know, you kind of want to use factoring. Uh, but if you cannot factor and you can't take the square root of both sides, well, what are we left with? Well, we have the quadratic formula to the rescue, okay? The quadratic formula will solve any quadratic equation. So we, anytime, uh, you know, we can't use any of these other techniques, we can always go to the quadratic formula. And there is another technique called completing the square, which is kind of like the long version of the, uh, the quadratic formula. You need to know this as well. But from a practical standpoint, uh, really, if you can't factor, if you can't take the square root of both sides, you're just going to fall back on the quadratic formula. Okay, so um, in the beginning of this video, I kind of uh, stated, said, hey, if you think you can solve this using another, another technique, go ahead and try. Okay, probably most of you uh, probably attempted to factor this. And uh, hopefully, you know, you know how to factor it. Like, you know, I can't factor this, so I do have to go to the quadratic formula. Okay, so what is the quadratic formula? Well, here it is right here. So just in case you forgot uh, what it looks like, this is basically it. All right, now let me explain this here real quick. So here is a quadratic equation uh, in what we call standard form. All right, so this is just a general quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c. A is the coefficient here of the x squared term. B is a coefficient, i.e. these are numbers, right, in front of these variables. And then C is just a number all by itself. So when we know the A, B, and C values, we plug it into the actual quadratic formula, which is the following, right? X is equal to minus B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. This uh, formula here, I would commit to your long-term memory. Now, there are a lot of formulas in uh, algebra and mathematics. Uh, and that's why you take notes, because you can't possibly memorize all formulas. But this one here, you, uh, I'm going to suggest that you do kind of memorize this. Uh, in other words, you know, reference your notes just to make sure you have the correct formula. But as you practice this, try to, you know, actually remember this so you can just kind of draw upon it at any time. Okay, so we're going to be using the quadratic formula to solve this quadratic equation. And let's go down here and take a look at the actual problem. So we have uh, x squared minus 4x is equal to 8. Now here, this the way the uh, equation is written out, it's not in standard form. Okay, now standard form, in other words, we have to get an equation where everything is on one side of the equation and then we have it equal to 0. Okay, now here, we don't have everything on one side of the equation. We have this 8 on this side, so we're going to have to move this 8 over here. So we'll subtract 8 from both sides of the equation. And now we have x squared uh, minus 4x minus 8. And you're going from highest to lowest power, right? So you have x squared, your x, and then your number. So this is our ax squared plus bx plus c format. Okay, so in other words, right here, you can see it's in this form right here. Okay, all right. So at this point, what we can do is go ahead and identify the coefficients which are the numbers in front of these variable terms. So right here, there is a one, okay, one right there. So our A is equal to one. Here, there's a negative four right here. That's a negative. So our B is gonna be equal to negative four. And then our constant here is negative eight. So that's gonna be our C value. So we have our A 
B and C values. So I've kind of set all this up for you. So if you're like, okay, I understand. Well, that's great. Okay, so if you didn't get this problem right, go ahead and plug in these respective values for A, B, and C into the quadratic formula and then simplify this thing and see if you can get the right answer, which I kind of uh, showed you in the beginning of this video. Because um, this, just kind of doing the math here, uh, gives a lot of students trouble. Okay, so I want to give you an opportunity to practice this if you were kind of confused uh, in or, uh, you know, the beginning of this video or the problem, you weren't quite sure what to do. So see if you can do this part, because if you can't do this part, then you know, obviously you're going to need to be able to practice using a formula, which is this, uh, you know, the whole idea of this video. All right, so let's go ahead and do this right now. Okay, so here we have our A, B, and C values. So here's the quadratic formula. So we're going to have to be super careful to replace each one of these variables with these uh, values. So here's B. So we have minus B, so I have to replace this B with a negative 4. I'm also going to have to uh, replace this B with the negative 4. And then, of course, I have A. I'm going to have to replace that with 1. And then C, I'll have to replace that with negative 8. And then here, A is with 1. Now, when you're plugging your values into the quadratic formula, you want to use parentheses. Okay, so in other words, here I have minus B. Use parentheses to plug in your values. So this B is negative 4, so this, you're going to have a negative parentheses, negative 4. All right, so let me show you all this work right here. So this is minus b, so it's negative of a negative 4 plus or minus square root parentheses again, right? Negative 4 squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So the first um, kind of uh, part of using a quadratic formula after you after you kind of identified your correct a, b, and c values is to be super, super careful plugging in those values into the quadratic formula. Now, a lot of students make mistakes. They'll plug in a, a number. They'll have the wrong signs. And again, if you use parentheses, that can really help uh, uh, kind of uh, reduce errors. So before you start doing the math here, double and triple check. You know, go back and say, okay, did I plug everything correct? Do I got my correct A, B, and C values? Double check, triple check. And then if you're like satisfied that yes, indeed, you plugged everything in uh, incorrectly, then from this point forward, we can kind of start simplifying all of this. So let's go ahead and get into this right now. Okay, so first things first, we'll go up here. We have minus a minus 4, okay? Well, of course, opposite of a negative 4, that'll be a positive 4 plus or minus. So here is negative 4 squared. Negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. Now this part right here, all underneath this square root is what we call the discriminant. And this is a kind of common error where a lot of students make mistakes with the quadratic formula. So this minus 4ac part, this minus, if you turn this into a plus negative, that will help uh, kind of identify what sign this number will be. So we have a negative times a positive times a negative. So this is all going to end up being a positive value. All right, so we know that 4 times 1 times negative or times 8 it's just it's going to be, we kind of just forget the signs here because we know the final answer is going to be positive. So we just go 4 times 1 times 8, which, of course, is going to be 32 all over 2 times 1, which, of course, is 2. All right, so you're just going to be working, um, uh, you know, all this math down step by step. You don't want to take too many steps. You know, just in other words, you don't want to go from all of this, do everything all at once and then have one final thing. You want to take only a one or two steps and continue to write so you, uh, you, you and your teacher can keep track of what's going on. All right. So let's go ahead and continue uh, the problem. So we have four plus or minus. Right. So now we're going to add these numbers underneath the square root. 16 plus 32 is 48. So we have four plus or minus the square root of 48 all over two. Now, if you uh, had this as your answer, I would give you a happy face, okay? Yeah, I might even give you an A minus, maybe like a 93%. So that's pretty good, but here's the problem. Uh, you have uh, some work to do here. This is not fully simplified, uh, but this is um, you know, an indication that you did plug in the correct values into the quadratic formula. You know what you're doing, but you're not done yet. We actually got a decent amount of work to go, so let's go ahead and continue to simplify uh, this situation. And namely, 
I have this square root, the square root of this 48. Anytime you have this square root, when you're dealing with the quadratic equation, you need to see if you can simplify this radical. And in this particular case, we can. All right, so let's focus in on the square root of 48. So the square root of 48 is equal to the square root of 16 times 3. Okay, so you want to look for perfect square factors here. Now, this is a whole nother kind of conversation or, or skill set working with uh, radicals and square roots. And at this stage, if you are completely kind of overwhelmed, let me give you a couple of suggestions. One, I'm going to direct you towards my Algebra 1 course and my Math Help program. Also, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel as well. But make you know note of what you're not understanding, okay, because the same thing is going to come up over and over again when you're doing these problems. All right, so the square root of 48, we're looking for perfect square factor. So 48 is the same thing as 16 times three. So the square root of 48 is the same thing as the square root of 16 times three. And then I could break this big square root into two separate square roots. So this would be the square root of 16 times the square root of three. That is a property of radicals or property of square roots. And uh, uh, now that we have a perfect square factor of 16, we can take the square root of 16, which of course is 4. So now we have 4 times the square root of 3. So the square root of 48 is equivalent to 4 times the square root of 3. And that is what we need to use to continue to simplify this problem. Okay, so here is where we kind of left off. We had 4 plus the square root of 48 all over 2. So we did all this work to simplify the square root of 48 into 4 square root of 3. So now we need to kind of um, uh, factor out some numbers here, some greatest common factors, and clean this up because you can see 2 will go into both these 4s right here. But just to make it super clear on how to kind of simplify this, uh, let's take a look at the numerator here. So here I have a 4 and I have a 4 here. And this is, this is plus or minus. So I can factor out this greatest common factor 4, right? So in other words, if I take that 4 and I multiply back in, uh, that would be 4 times 1 or 4. And then this 4 times that square root of 3 would be 4 square root of 3. So this is a factor. So now I have 2 down in my denominator. So 4, of course, is the same thing as 2 times 2. So I can cross cancel 1, 2. That will leave me with a 2 right there. Okay, up in the numerator. So I'll take this 2. That will go into that 4 twice. So now I have 2 times uh, uh, times 1 plus or minus the square root of 3. And then, of course, I can distribute back in. Uh, take this 2 multiply back in to both of these terms right here. And let's go ahead and wrap this up. So this would be 2 times 1, which, of course, is 2. And 2 times the square root of 3. So this is the final answer. Okay, so x is equal to 2 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 3. And again, uh, as I kind of indicated in the beginning of this video, all quadratic equations have two solutions. So just to be super clear, the two solutions, this plus or minus means one of the solutions is 2 plus the square root of 3. The other is 2 minus the square root of 3. So these are the two unique solutions. But we... I uh, like to kind of use this shorthand here, this plus or minus, just to make it easy to write all this out. Okay, so how'd you do? Well, if you, again, if you did this correctly, that's very, very good. Uh, but I would say this problem is a pretty easy problem when it comes to the quadratic formula. So, you know, uh, the whole point of this video was, one, just to practice quadratic formula, two, to kind of you know, uh, think about the quadratic formula in the bigger picture of quadratic equations. And again, if there is a skill, whether it be factoring or uh, working with square roots that you're not, you know, comfortable with or you're, you know, just not confident about, you need to address this because this is not going away. Okay, so hopefully this video helped you out. If that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.